Welcome back to another episode of the Rates Specialist Series. Now, we are continuing where we left off from last episode of getting an insane amount of drops at Rates on my first, like, 17kc. Anyways, I'm out of Ruby Bolts, and that's the main bolts that I use for my crossbar Rates, so I'm gonna go ahead and make some. Uh, the way I'm doing it right now is getting Cosmics through Ali Morrison. He sells a guaranteed 10 Cosmics per world, so it's an easy way to get the Cosmics to enchant my bolts. Otherwise, I would runecraft it, but I'm feeling a bit lazy here, so... But this is fast, you know? You get in really, really quickly here. Uh, that's such a satisfying XP drop number. Constant, you know? Very satisfying. Nothing left. That was so fast. Here is a really good raid that you can do fast with or without prepping, so I'm gonna be prepping this. It's got the Meter Dial, Guardians, Vespila, Shamans. They're all really, really fast bosses. And the skill rooms are really fast as well. Agility and Crabs. It's going to be a while before I can focus more on the faster layout race. Because right now it's just better for me to try to find raids that doesn't involve prepping. Or just inherently really fast raids that I can prep. So this layout that I found is pretty slow, but it's very safe in terms of no prepping. Fangars will probably drop uh, three to four brews. Fispeal is two brews, Midas one brew, and there's plenty of restores and overloads and prayer enhance from Midas, Shamans, and Fispeal. So it's actually a really long, long room. Oh my god! I got another purple. Holy shit! What the hell, man? Dude, I'm telling you guys, scuff raids, bro. You just gotta do the longest ever raids. Holy shit. All right, man, let's go and open this up, boys. <laughs> Another ancestral hat. Oh my god, dude. There we go. Already off to uh, placeholders, you know. Placeholder central, man. Well, I'm already at uh, two dupes right here. Two hats, two arcane prayer scrolls. There we go. Damn, Augury would be so good for this, honestly. Like, I think I might have failed this one if I couldn't get to the grubs on time. Oh, I'm dead. Ah, that just really fucked that up. Fuck. Okay, yeah, I messed that up. Yep, it stung all, the, all of it. In a situation like this, a lot of times the portal will have regenerated because the grubs, you know, will basically have hatched. Luckily for me, I was able to attack the portal before she stung any of the grubs, so I had plenty of time to make it back even after it died. Oh, that was so fucking close. God, these stones are just not in the right places. Alright. Just stay calm and I should be okay. Oh, these rocks are just not in good places. Oh, God, these rocks are just... Don't kill me. Please. Oh no, my first death. That's unfortunate, man. I had some really unlucky rocks. Oh shit, I just hit 99 hit points? Oh, crazy, dude. Wow. I haven't been keeping up my hit points. Damn, I mean, looking back, yeah, it was definitely close for sure, but wow. I just got my first 99 and uh, finally pushed me in 116 combat. Holy shit. Yo, that's pretty cool, man. I'm not even gonna lie. First 99 on the account. Cool. Oh my god. Fucking loading screen. Motherfucker. So I'm gonna see if I can do this uh, Vanguard with just one brew. Uh, please heal. Yes. Long range with rune crossbow sneak attack. Oh. There we go. I've done 29 KC I raised as of today, so that means 46 left to go for my first ever upgrade. So the question is, which one should I go for first? There are 19 things to go for, but a lot of them require a lot of time and preparation, whether it's grinding Slayer levels or actually getting some other items to prepare to actually get it, like the Inferno Cape. So the first item I want to go for is the Necklace of Anguish because I'm really close to the crafting level anyways and it's one of the more beneficial ones out of the lot so that's what we're gonna go for first and another reason why is because 
I don't really have much to AFK at the moment because I used to do wyverns for seeds and stuff. But I really don't need seeds since I'm done with shamans now. So I need something else to AFK that is actually beneficial. So I thought, why not just fill buckets of sand? So yeah, let's go for that first. I'm going to finalize it here. So the first box, aka first milestone, is going to be the anguish. And once I put it in this box, it's final. I cannot change my mind. So I do have to be careful. And once I reach 75kc, I have to decide on the next upgrade. And again, the next upgrade, whatever it is I put in, it's final. I cannot change my mind. All right, this is KC10. I've reached double digits. Please give me a bombless bucket. I don't know if it's that rare, though. This rotation that I have here is one of the most efficient rates that I can possibly do right now because I can get it done quick and also get really good points. So this is Mining Room, Crabs, Fossa, Tecton, Fispila, and Ajoda Room. There are even more faster rates. However, those rates with like Mutadon and stuff in there, I can't actually do them without prepping because my current gear is not good enough to actually no prep some of the faster rates. Shit. Get away. Oh my god. Ooh, there you go. First sub 30. That was a great raid. If you have extra space before you get to Ulm and there's a Twisted Potion drop, I would pick that up because it's actually super useful for the final head phase. Say Ulm is close to dead and the overload ran out, you don't actually have to overload again. Because overloading during the head phase is very dangerous. You lose 50 HP, it's easy to get stacked out by a rock and like his auto attack and just get one to two ticked and die. So instead of overloading, I just drink my Twisted Potion. In this case, I did that. And I was able to gain the effects of pretty much overload for range and not have to worry about losing 50 HP and risking dying. Perfect. Let's go for one hit. Nice. Nice, I got another hit. Oh, that was so nice. Oh my god. Man, I really don't want to overload because it's so risky. This might be my chance. I should be able to maybe get a heal. This is so hard. Ooh. I have one more stamina. My die? Holy shit. God damn. Holy shit, that actually worked. Oh, that might have killed me. Oh, uh, I knew it! Sit the fuck down. Oh shit, I just hit 92 strength. Oh yeah. Alright. No purple, but it's a good raid though. Maybe the Torn Prayer Scroll today. Yes! Let's go, Torn Prayer Scroll. Only took 35 raids. Hell yeah, man. That's awesome, man. I can start using this at raids and at a bunch of places. Such a versatile. Prayer, not gonna lie. Got five purples before I got the torn prayer scroll though. <laughs> Appears to be an archive invocation of the gods. We'd like to absorb its power. Yes, indeed I will. There we go, that's awesome man. Here is going to be my first use for preserve. I'm gonna be using it to maintain my imbue heart boost longer. So I am trying to prepare for the anguish upgrade coming up in 75 race KC. So to complement the buckets of sand, I need the giant seaweed. So I'm going here to killing lobstrosities with the trident and getting some giant seaweed spores for the preparations. Overall, preserve is really useful whenever you're trying to maintain any boost, whether it's skilling or not. So for example, Slayer maintaining your potion boost is really nice for that. Um, also for any sort of... Uh, item making when you need a boost to make it or for quests just there's so many uses it's super versatile ultimately i want to get all the way 93 crafting because i'm going to unlock all of the zenai jewelries all the way up to torture at 93 and people have told me that if i get around 100 seaweed spores at 85 crafting i should probably have enough seaweed spores to go all the way 93 so i think i'm just going to go ahead and collect them all right now First ever run of the giant CV, and I managed to get over 70 plus of them. I can see why you only need about like 100 of sheets just to get all the way to 93, man. Yeah, it's you get so much. But I think overall it'll be faster than just doing C runs, so. Oh, nice. 67 Hunter. First uh, level. 
from bird houses. Like I'm pretty sure it's one of many. I would say. All right. <clears throat> oh my god, no! The scuff raid. The scuff raid actually got me a purple, dude. Yo, my man Gaddy, thanks for the purple, bro. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. I doubt if it's Spieler like halfway into the raid and lost like 3k points, but I got a purple somehow. I don't know how I'm getting these purples right now, dude. I want like my six purple and like 30, 38 raids or some sh some stupid shit. I don't even understand, dude. All right, well here we go, guys. Let's see what we got. Fuck, I'm misclicking. Come on. Ancestral hat again? <sighs> no. <laughs> I still can't complain, but I got another ancestral hat. Really? Damn, dude. It's already dupes, bro. It's crazy. I'm already getting so many dupes. Wow. That's crazy. Look at this shit. Mm, let's see. Nope. We're gonna try and uh, own phase 3 and then watch strike and kill the main chan. Holy shit. Oh, fuck. You know what's more sad? You just made me realize I only have 57 tried and charges. What a waste of 18 minutes. Alright, finally wrapped up on our 40th raid. Means 35 more to go before we can pursue our first upgrade. This raid is going to be my 50th raid and according to my raids rewards rules, every 50 raids I can unlock a prayer scroll. So I currently have one prayer scroll, which is the Augury prayer scroll. So once I complete this, I can finally start using Augury. It's going to be insane. So the 50th raid is actually one of the fastest raids that you can possibly find just because every single room in this raid is really fast. Except one caveat, every single room here doesn't drop food. Except Mutadao, which drops one. Mutadao is at the very end, so that means I have to use five brews that I brought with me and survive all of the rooms before I can prep. I could prep before, but prepping before everything's done is a lot slower. So being able to prep at the end is really crucial because that way I can do it in like two minutes or less, which will save me a lot of time. RNG was on my side. I managed to do it. Yes. <laughs> Prepping at the very end is so much faster than before for a few reasons. You don't have to backtrack, number one. And number two, you can collect the resources you need to make the potions on the way. By the time you make it all the way to Ohm, you will have encountered most likely a boss or two that will drop some seeds. And you will also encounter at least one or two scav runes that will also drop the secondaries to make your potions. While I venture further and further into the raid, I collected all those secondaries and then I just used them all up at the last break room. And yeah, just drop all your potions that you don't currently need so you can grab some vials and then make a few potions, whatever it is that you need to do the ohm comfortably. And yeah, that preparation time only takes me, I would say, probably two minutes or less. So it's really, really fast. Please don't flame on me. Come on. Yes, number 50, boys. Anything purple? No purple, but it doesn't matter. Because finally, dude, I actually have something unlocked. Ah, oh, the first race reward unlocked, you know? That actually had a limitation. Alright, dude. 50 rates of using Mystic Might. Honestly, Mystic Might performed a lot better than I ever freaking thought. It's time to upgrade and become more powerful, baby. Wait, do I have 77 per- I do, yeah, of course I do. I trained this earlier. You can make out some fatal words on the ancient parchment appears to be an archive invocation. Oh, it's the same for Torn Prayer Scroll. Alright, man. Let's do this. Learn Argri, please. Yes. Oh, baby, dude. This is crazy. 25% magic attack and defense versus 15 attack, magic attack and defense, dude. It's a whole 10% higher. That's actually ridiculous. Not to mention it also counts as an insane uh, physical defense buff. I cannot wait to showcase how amazing Augury actually is in the next video. You're going to be seeing it in ways used that you might have never thought. It's one of the most underrated prayers and honestly it deserves way more attention than it currently does. Only being overshadowed by of course the rigor prayer.